This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, State Representative Tara Tuhill is here to talk about the state budget. Welcome to another edition of FYI on SSPTV and SSPTV.com. I'm Ken Kara and let's get to our headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Two people were struck by a car outside the Terrence Plaza on South Poplar Street. It happened just before 2 p.m. According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, the two pedestrians were flown to regional hospitals. Police did talk with the driver who did stop in the plaza parking lot. Congressman Lou Barletta is calling on Congress to defund so-called sanctuary cities, and yesterday he led a panel discussion on the subject at the National Press Club. There are 200 mayors around the country who believe they are kings and will pick and choose what laws uh, they will enforce. Creating safe havens for illegal aliens to take the lives of others, like Kate Steinle, um, you know, how many murders, how many innocent people need to be murdered before we stop the don't ask, don't tell policies dealing with illegal immigration? And that's what it really has become. See, when, when we talked about don't ask, don't tell, it always had a different meaning. But when we apply it to illegal immigration, many walk away. They don't want to hear that. The hearing comes after the July 1st murder of 32-year-old Kate Steinle in San Francisco. Her accused killer is a seven-time felon who was deported five times. Barletta has sponsored the Mobilizing Against Sanctuary Cities Act, which would cut federal funds to sanctuary cities. His stand against illegal immigration came about after 29-year-old Derek Kitchline of Hazleton was shot to death in 2006. Barletta was mayor at that time. Kitchline's accused killer was also an illegal immigrant. A 16-year-old girl will face several charges after an incident yesterday that damaged several cars and two garages. According to state police at Troop N, the teen who was driving a BMW first sideswiped a vehicle in West Hazleton. While fleeing from that incident, she allegedly struck three more vehicles before crashing into two garages. The BMW came to rest partially inside the second garage. The driver and passenger fled on foot. The budget standoff continues in Harrisburg. FYI's Lisa Sugar talked with one local lawmaker for the latest. As you know, Governor Tom Wolf vetoed the budget. We are now talking with State Representative Tara Tuhill, who represents the 116th Legislative District, about that veto. What was your reaction when the governor did the veto? I was surprised. I know that he was saying that he was going to veto it, um, but he I was hoping he would keep it on his desk and that he would approve it because it was an on time, no tax budget, um, which is what we need. And people out there, they need um, not to have their taxes raised. We've been raised, you know, taxes have been raised uh, in all sorts of ways. Uh, so we were trying to hold the line, no tax budget, on time budget, which we're co constitutionally mandated to do. Um, so I was a little bit surprised. I, I had been hopeful that he would approve it. It has all of our school district funding in there, Hazleton area, more funding than ever before, uh, pre-K, special education, more funding uh, without raising taxes. So I was hoping that he would uh, approve and sign that budget. And then you can always do a supplemental budget uh, dealing with the sales tax, personal income tax, and trying to solve the property tax issue. Uh, but wrapping all of that up into the budget makes things very, very hard to uh, get to the finish line. Well, now, since this veto happened, have both sides sat down at the table? Are we anywhere closer to getting this resolved? So um, they've been to the table. Uh, the leadership, basically the way they do it is the governor, uh, both of the appropriations chairman, minority and majority parties, they all come to the table. And when you have a new governor, um, and it's no fault of their own, that you have to basically go over a lot of things and you have to learn a lot of information. Uh, so it's been hard. And I think um, what's making it harder is now across the state, uh, legislators, so you have your Republican state legislature, which is the Republican House and the Republican Senate. We have majorities. Um, we came in with those majorities at the same time that we had a Democratic governor. So it's a bipartisan government. Uh, we need to work together. We need to, you know, get the ball moving and work together. Uh, so it's making it a little bit hard because some people are still in election mode and there are political mailers and robo calls going out with a lot of misinformation uh, that, you know, 
education's been underfunded or education's been cut, restore the cuts. And that's, that's all rhetoric. There have not been any cuts to education. Um, that's referring back to President Obama's stimulus, which was a one-time stimulus. So it would be more funding in the budget that we put forward, um, and hopefully we're going to we're going to have to go back to the drawing board, do it again, and the budget numbers are good. It's more money than ever before uh, for education, and it's um, it's using the taxpayer money that's already going in. Um, that money, not asking you, the taxpayers, for more money from your pockets, uh, from your checkbooks, from your um, your paycheck. It's just using what we have um, and cutting what we don't need to use. So um, going forward, hopefully it's an education process when you have a new governor and he's all new staff and, and there's a lot to learn. So this was this is my fifth budget uh, and it would have been, you know, it was on time. It was on his desk in an on time manner. So we're going to hopefully keep on pushing forward and find that bipartisanship and be able to get some things signed and get things accomplished. So I am hopeful. Um, there's just a lot of political rhetoric going on and a lot of people are still in election mode, which is unfortunate. All righty. If you have any questions, give our state representative a call. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Well, coming up next, grab the family pet because our next segment is for them as we preview Bark in the Park. Later, the commissioner from Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling will drop in and he says it's his way or the highway. Stay tuned. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. This week's Downtown Hazleton Alliance for Progress segment has gone to the dogs. Here's a preview of this Saturday's Bark in the Park on Main Street in Cunningham near the library from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's being hosted by Hazleton Power and the Valley Community Church and Drums. This is Letty. One of her owners is Jocelyn Rizzo, the executive director of Hazleton Power. She's uh, very hyper, very, um, very attached to my partner, you know, very, a little bit of separation anxiety, but that comes with a rescue. Um, she's great. She, she, the love you get from a rescue is second to none. I mean, they, they know they got a second chance and, and they, they show that to you. Letty came from Hillside SPCA in Pottsville, and that's one of the organizations that will benefit from this weekend's Bark in the Park. Hillside has a separate fund for their veterinary bills. It's called Joe's Fund. And essentially, because there are no kill shelter, any dog that comes in with any type of illness or ailment or a disability will get treated through the funds with Joe's Fund. Now we're going to meet Al. He's not a dog. He's a person named Aldi Salvatore, and he's the lead pastor at Valley Community Church. He doesn't have any dogs, but he does have two kids. Do your kids ever say, hey, I want a dog, Dad? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And uh, I, when they get older, when they can take the dog out and clean up the poo, is that all right? Can I say poo? You can say poo. All right, yeah. I can say poo. Um, you know, if, they're, if they can clean up, that, that's cool, but, uh, but we're not quite there yet. But once they get a little older, you know, we'll, we'll definitely look forward to getting a dog, a big dog. Dogs of all shapes and sizes are welcome at Bark in the Park. People love, like, pets, and they love seeing them do fun things, and it's always fun to go to the dog shows and see, like, you know, the parades and the different types of dogs, and this can be something that you can have right here in your backyard where your dog can participate to be part of a parade, to win prizes for best personality, best look-alike of their owner because you know you see those Facebook pictures and like I think that doll looks more like the owner than their kids do you know and those kind of things so it, it, it's, it's, it's an opportunity where um, you don't have to go for the whole day and you can be part of that day and there's something for you and there's something for your pets and uh, you can win prizes and uh, there'll be food there as well and music and, and uh, lots of entertainment. If you don't have a furry best friend yet that you can enter into this weekend's owner and dog kissing contest you may just find one at Bark in the Park. We have a couple uh, different shelters that are going to be there that will have adoptable dogs. So if you're in the market for, you know, <laughs> adopting a puppy, um, they'll have them there. I know that they're trying one specific group is trying to find a permanent home for Casper. He's um, a deaf 
pit bull that was rehomed. So I know they're trying really hard to, to get him a home as well. Um, you can come, you can play with the animals, you can adopt a dog, and we also have tons of vendors that have nothing to do with dogs, so there'll be th something for everyone. There will be a caricature artist there to do drawings of your pet, and if you're more of a cat person, there's a possibility of a cat-based shelter stopping by with some of their animals. Bark in the Park is also looking for donations for the Hazelton Animal Shelter, and here's a little list of what they need. It's going to be a big pet weekend. Kick it off on Friday with Adopt Me from the Hazelton Animal Shelter right Right here on FYI and then on Saturday head to Bark in the Park in Cunningham on Main Street. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. I admit this isn't the best weather shot in the world as walking down the street saw the train got excited plopped the camera down and here you go folks in fact it's short too so let's get right to our weather forecast from the National Weather Service tonight mostly clear we'll get down to a cool 56 degrees on Friday though it's going to heat up partly sunny we'll get up near 79 degrees Friday night 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms mostly cloudy skies our low will be 64 on Saturday 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms a partly sunny day get up to 83 degrees very nice Saturday night, another chance of showers and thunderstorms. Our low will be 65. And then on Sunday, we have a 30% chance of showers with a thunderstorm possible after 8 a.m. Partly sunny, our high will be 85. Sunday night, we'll get down to 67 degrees, another chance of showers and thunderstorms. On Monday, it goes up to a 60% chance of showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy high in the 80s again. And then on Monday night, our low will be 66. Guess what? 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High, the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat including our ice cream and yogurt or some hot food including our burgers, hot dogs, fries, and much more. That's Valley High, Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. You're invited to take part in a really fun event, but it's all to help a local man who is battling cancer. It is called a poker run for Jimmy Chimpy McGran, and here to tell us all about it is Jimmy's brother, John McGran, and also one of his best friends, Jeff Willard, who organized this special event. John, I'm gonna start with you. Your brother um, battling cancer right now, so tell us a little bit about what he's going through. My brother, Jim, who's a year younger than me, back on April 4th, he um, his voice started to go. I was helping him do some painting, and um, he comes in the next day and he said he was yelling to his son and something came loose in his throat and came out and he, and he was a little concerned, which he should have been, and he went to the doctors a few days later and they found out he had throat cancer. And the tumor had grown to where it was on one of his vocal cords and paralyzed it. So they immediately set him up for uh, radiation and chemo and he went seven weeks of radiation and he did like several weeks of chemo, then he had a break, and now he's back on the last four series of chemo. He's talking again normal, and he's, his weight is down because he can't eat because of the radiation, um, so he has a tube in, but his spirits are high, and this, this event that we're planning here is to help him because of all the bills that he's racked up because he hasn't been able to work because of the tubes and the tiredness from the cancer and the treatment. And he has a painting business, so tough to do that. You've been helping him out and everybody trying to keep his business going. Yes, and I'm not a painter, <laughs> and uh, I stepped up, and my brother Jeff has really stepped up. Jeff's painted for years, and he's been, and right now he's working on an apartment in West Hazleton for Jim. Uh, Jim's still not back in the game, but he, we hope that within several weeks from now he'll get his strength back, and he'll be able to eat again, and then he'll be back rolling again. Well, we hope so, literally with the roller rolling again, right? <laughs> and he's got some great friends because you decided, hey, I want to help. You're a good friend. So what did you want to do then, Jeff? Well, I put a poker run together to uh, help him out with his bills and his family. Um, it's out at the 4th Street Pub this Saturday, 930 to 11. Anybody can show up. Um, Five o'clock, if you don't have a bike, you can come over to Jonathan's Nest. Uh, $10, you can get a buffet live band coming out of uh, Philadelphia. It's called Roslyn Creek. Um, they're coming all the way up uh, to benefit for us. So you don't need to have a bike, but if you have one, great. You can go as part of in your car if you want to. And there's also, you said, a great lunch is going to be provided midway, too. Yes, at uh, the Tap House. Uh, they're going to put out some food for us uh, halfway through the run. The run's 100 miles. Um, it's all up through Blakeslee, the back Poconos. It's going to be a nice day. 
And how much is it to enter? Uh, it's $15 for a rider, $5 per hand for the poker run. And then at the uh, Jonathan's Nest at 5 o'clock, it will be $10 for walk-ins. And that will give you your food, a live band, and a good time. Now, there was a special reason why you wanted to do this, because you know what's going on in his life right now. Yes, uh, my wife had cancer as well. And uh, I know how the bills are, and it hurts. And it's, it takes a toll on the family. Well, I'm sure a lot of people out there, sadly, have you know, been in the same situation, and they know. So you can come out, though, and have a great day of fun and help for a wonderful cause so that hopefully uh, we, can, uh, we can get uh, Jim back so that he can be painting again and uh, living his life the way he should be. So everybody, come on out this Saturday. It is happening starting at 9.30 with registration till 11 o'clock, and then the bike run will leave at 11 o'clock at the 4th Street Pub. So please, and if you need more information, you can call 570-987-4105. Guys, I hope you get a ton of people to come out, and please, will you give your brother all our best? Thanks, Lisa. Lisa, once again, thank you for that interview. Here's your midday winning lottery numbers before we go to break on FYI. Pick 2, 8, 0. Pick 3, 5, 9, 0. Pick 4, 0, 1, 6, 9. And pick 5, 3, 0, 6, 1, 8. Those numbers brought to you by Boyer Insurance Agency with two locations to serve you. One in Cunningham on Sugarloaf Avenue, the other in Nescapec on Broad Street. You can call Boyer Insurance in Nescapec at 570-752-7683 and in Cunningham at 570-788-3543. We get you all ready for P. PPW's big wrestling event on Saturday after this break. This is FYI News 13 Sports. Very excited for this interview as we preview PPW's event this weekend, Point Break. Ryan Boyle joins us. He is the commissioner for PPW, and it's interesting. I recognized you from being in the ring at other wrestling events, but let's talk about your background as a wrestling fan. You obviously grew up as a fan. Tell us how you got so into it. I was a major fan growing up. Major fan. Uh, you know, growing up, my, most like most kids, my wrestling idol growing up was Hulk Hogan. You know, I was, loved Hulk Hogan. Everybody loved Hulk Hogan. Yep. And uh, I've been into it uh, probably since I was five years old, and I've never left it. So eventually, you and some of the Bonomo brothers, some other guys, you say, hey, let's start something up, and Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling is born. Did you ever think it would grow like this? You have a home at Holy Family Academy. The shows are growing. You're bringing in these wrestling superstars. Our original vision of this, myself, uh, Paul, and uh, Anthony McKeegan, we never imagined that we would be where we are today. Let's talk about this show, Point Break. You are the commissioner once the lights come on and everything starts to happen. You were telling me about a big, big match this weekend. Samoa Joe is coming in, big wrestling star, taking on another one, Alpha Junior, who holds your title right now, PPW World Championship, right? Tell us about how you were billing this and why this is so huge. It's the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe, who currently is in the WWE, so that's very exciting versus the Samoan Storm off of Junior, the Battle of Samoa. And you said it's interesting because Samoa Joe, when you hear Samoans, you also think they might have connections to Hazleton because Alpha and them are around here for a while. You said he doesn't. Yeah, Samoa Joe, uh, coincidentally, is one of the few Samoans we've come across that is not related to the Allentown Samoans. That's interesting. What else is going on this weekend? What else should fans, that's maybe the, the top bill match, but what else should fans look forward to? We have some of the best talent in the area coming to this show. From right here in West Hazleton, Smooth Tommy Swade, who is the heart of PPW Entertainment. He'll be there. The product, David Starr, will be there. Uh, Adrenaline Rush, Sammy Pandora, the British Wolf, some of the best talent in the area. PPW Entertainment has always been proud to say we have the best wrestling in this area. Now, as the commissioner, you told me you're not always everyone's favorite once you go into the ring. What is that like? It's an adrenaline rush. Literally, uh, I go out there and people yell a certain thing to me. I will not say that because I don't want to get the camera guy started. <laughs> but it's fun and I enjoy it. And the more they, they yell at me and the more they boo me, the more I love it. You guys have more stars coming in. Booker T is coming in. You're very excited. Mick Foley, Mankind, Cactus Jack. This is very exciting. Huge name coming to our area, coming to Hazleton. Yeah, Mick Foley, uh, very excited about Mick Foley. Uh, Booker T, he's going to be great. He's on WWE every week. Uh, Mick Foley, though, he's one of my favorite wrestlers growing up, uh, so I'm very excited about that. 
How do you go and be the commissioner then when you're working with like a Booker T or Mick Foley? Guys, you probably grew up watching and idolizing, and now all of a sudden you guys are just, just working together. I don't know. It's, uh, it's going to be an experience. Um, I might, uh, you know, Mick Foley back in the day was the commissioner of the WWE. Mm. I might have to bow to the master. <laughs> What is, what, tell us about the commissioner a little bit. I mean, as, as you're talking to me right now, Ryan, what, what is it like? What do you try to put into that once you go into the ring? What's something you try to always get across? I'm the boss, and I'm in charge. It's my way or the highway. Awesome. Check out Ryan, Samoa Joe, big weekend, Point Break this Saturday, Holy Family Academy, PPW, and we'll have more talk, we'll be previewing more and talking with some of the wrestlers from PPW in the coming weeks. Thursday is $1 Burger Night at Bottlenecks. Get a juicy fourth pound burger for only $1 all night long. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, Holy Trinity Orthodox Church, 223 South Kennedy Drive in McAdoo, will be having a free meal on Saturday, July 18th from noon to 2 p.m. The community is invited to attend. Our next announcement, the 62nd Annual St. Jude Parish Picnic, will be held August 7th and 8th from 4 to 11 p.m. and August 9th from noon to 9 p.m. on the parish grounds at 420 South Mountain Boulevard in Mountaintop. The picnic features great food, desserts galore, and an open pit barbecue chicken dinner on Sunday. Entertainment nightly, games and activities for the youngsters, regular and instant bingo, and a large basket raffle. For info, just call 570-574-2535. And finally, the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute will be holding a Cancer Survivor Celebration of Life, Sunday, July 19th from noon to 5 p.m. We'll be having a pig roast, health and wellness info, entertainment, games, prizes, and more. Call 570-277-6218 to register. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Ruth Mary Pritchard of Hazleton. Funeral services will be held at the convenience of the family. Arrangements are by the Stauffer Funeral Home. Dorothy T. Kletchko of Freeland. Funeral is Friday at 9.30 a.m. from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Teresa Vagley of Medina, Ohio. Graveside services Saturday at 1 p.m. in Most Precious Blood Cemetery. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And Robert M. Kalanak of Latimer Mines. Arrangements will be announced by the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. My name is Leanne Falabel. I am the Vice President of Marketing at the Greater Hazleton Chamber, and today I'm going to talk about our annual Downtown Farmers Market, which is starting this Friday, July 17th, and it will continue every Friday until September 4th. So we'll be in downtown Hazleton from 10 until 2 every Friday. And it will be located right on Broad Street between Wyoming and Laurel Streets. And there will, there will be an array of different farmers um, at the market providing fresh produce, fresh fruits. Uh, Burgers Farm will be there again. O'Hara's Farm will be there with their fresh peaches. Um, we also are going to have some crafters and vendors there this year. Uh, one of them will be providing some lotions and soaps. Uh, another one will be providing local honey. Um, there'll be some uh, music and entertainment every week and also some different activities for the kids. So we're going to have a lot going on. Um, if anybody would like any more information or even if you wanted to still participate in the farmer's market as a vendor or a crafter, we um, are still accepting applications for that, so you can go right to our website, hazeltonchamber.org, and all the information is right on our calendar. Big news out of State College as Penn State announces they're taking the names off the back of their football jerseys. Can't wait to talk to Ron Marchetti about that tomorrow. You'll see him tomorrow on FYI. Until then, take it easy, everyone. Thank you.